All right, fam. So we are back at again with another crazy video. And bro, they are trying to get my boy Trump out of here. They are trying to get this man out of here for what reason? I don't know. I don't know. Yo, I just watched a conference of Trump. Okay. I just watched one of his conference like a couple minutes ago. Uh, it was from a month ago. And bro, I'm, I'm just looking at it and I'm watching. I'm listening to everything he's saying. I'm like, bro, how could people honestly hate this dude uh, seriously how could you really hate a man who cares more about america than he do about other countries you can't you can't hit a man like that you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna go into a whole ramble and this and that but yeah bro they done took your boy trump off the colorado uh colorado uh ballot bro i don't think that ever been done in history i don't know y'all let me know in, uh, in the comment section below have that ever been done to any president you know i only lived through three presidents okay i only lived through obama uh biden and trump those the those the ones i lived through you feel me um i probably lived through some other ones but i was born in 2003 so these the only three i remember so y'all let me know if this ever been done in, uh in history but trump finally spoke out on it i believe this is the video where he spoke out this was just live so yeah we finna go ahead and react to it hit the like button subscribe to no post notifications follow your boy on all social media platforms and follow your boy subscribe to the second channel okay subscribe to the second channel it's lit over there it's a podcast so i definitely recommend y'all subscribe it's in the link description box below without further ado let's get it let's go make america great again thank you thank you best I want to thank a very special person. She stepped up very early and very strong, and she's uh, highly respected. I think she's probably your most, uh, we have to call everyone a politician, I guess, if you run for office. I think she's probably your most popular politician right now in Iowa. Brenna Bird, your attorney general. Thank you, Brenna. Thank you, darling. She's been incredible. A man who uh, endorsed me before I was even running. I said, who's this guy from Iowa that keeps talking about Trump? And he's a very, I call him the Marlboro man. He's a handsome guy. State Senator Brad Zahn. Brad, Brad, where's Brad? Thank you, Brad. Thank you very much. He's been great. He really, I mean, he was endorsing me before I ran. I said, who is that guy? But he was probably the first one in the whole country. State representatives, Bobby Kaufman, who's fantastic, by the way. And his father's, his father's fantastic, too. Derek Wolf, Craig Johnson, and, of course, Iowa GOP chairman, Jeff Kaufman. There's a slight relationship there. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and a great job. And it's fantastic to be with you. We'll be back a few more times, believe it or not. We have that big day coming up. We'll be back. We got to be sure that we put this thing away. The poll numbers are scary because we're leading by so much. The key is you have to get out and vote because, you know, I tell it all the time, if you don't get out and vote, we can put this to bed after Iowa, if you want to know the truth. We can put it to bed for them, too. They can go home and forget it. But you have to go out. Don't sit home and say, you know, I think we'll take it easy, darling. It's a wonderful day, beautiful. Let's just take it easy, watch television, and watch the results now, because crazy things can happen. You got to get out. This is really important. Our country's at stake. We have a country that's never been in trouble like it is right now. So get out and vote, whether we're leading in the polls or not leading in the polls. And in this case, we're leading by 30 to 40 points, I guess. But we got to win. Maybe we can win by more than that. Because, you know, if we win. See, see, and th this is the thing. This is the thing I want people to know. Okay, now, remind you, I am young. I am 20 years old. So this will be my first year ever voting. Okay, first year ever voting. You know what I'm saying? I just turned 20. I just turned 20. So this will be literally my first year ever voting. However, this is, people don't need to be so much into politics to see what's going on around in the country because a lot of people my age they are oh, man i ain't into all that politics stuff but then you talk about how much you hate this country then you talk about how other countries are doing better than this country you talk about how you want to leave this country to go to another country number one people from other countries are coming here okay i, I just want you to realize that and then ask yourself why are they coming to america oh better education better this and better that oh more opportunity all these different things now i also want to tell you and this is literally, I, I, this is for people that's my age. Bro, I had to learn the hard way. Okay, growing up and not knowing about politics, 
that's the worst thing that you possibly can do to a child is because when a child is starting to get older and becoming in his dough years, he needs to know more or she needs to know more and get in tune with. I ain't saying be a hardcore politician. No, I ain't saying that because I'm not a hardcore politician, but I need to know at least enough to get out there to know who's running for president to make this country better again. So that way my life can be much easier. When Trump was freaking president, I was just now becoming an adult. So of course, when he was president, I didn't know nothing about that stuff. I just knew that we had a president and everybody hated him and everybody said he was racist. And I thought he was racist because I heard everybody else say he was racist. But now that I watch his conferences, now that I watch all the interviews that he be on, I realize that this dude is not racist. People just, they don't like the statements that he make. And sometimes when he, sometimes when he talk, you know what I'm saying? He'll make a statement, but they'll take it, they'll take that statement, they'll take it out of context. They won't add what he said before that or what he said after that. They would just take that little portion, post it on the internet, and say, Oh yeah, Trump said this. He said grab a girl by the coach. Like it's just all these different things, bro. But I want everybody to know you need to get out there and vote. Just how Trump said it, you need to get out there and vote. If you want this country to be better, if you care enough about this country, if you care enough even about your own well-being, please get out there and vote for the right president. Get into seeing their conferences, get into seeing interviews of people interviewing them and all these different things so you can see what their morals are. Because remind, believe it or not, when you vote for people like Trump or Biden, you got to understand that whatever their morals and values are, whatever their, you know, wherever their standards are, that's going to affect you in the long run. You know why? Because you're American. OK, unless you go to flee to another country and all these different things. But trust and believe me, you won't be better off there. OK, so you might as well stay your butt right where you where you belong, where you came from and and help America to be to be great again by voting for the right president. So this country can be back to where it used to be. OK, I'm just saying I just had to say that. OK, I just truly had to say that because I don't want people. <sighs> yeah, I ain't going to keep talking. But anyways. If we win in a massive number, but it's a little bit less than that, they'll say, oh, he didn't meet expectations. It was uh, because they're fake news. We know that, you know, <laughs> they're fake news. They are the biggest fakers in the world. During this holiday season, families all across America are struggling under the brutal weight of Crooked Joe's failures, disasters, heartless betrayals and inflation. While the stock market is making rich people richer, ben, and, and I mean, it's crazy what's going on. Rich people are getting richer. Of course, I'm a politician now, so we just keep chugging along, right? But it's making, but you're going to have a crash, the likes of which you haven't seen because of what they're doing. It's going to be scary. Biden's inflation catastrophe is demolishing your savings and ravaging your dreams. His sky-high energy prices, the highest we've ever had, are brutalizing your wallets. Our border has been... A race criminals are running wild in our Democrat-run cities, and thanks to Crooked Joe's breathtaking weakness, the world is going up in flames. The whole world is up in flames. You didn't have any of this stuff when I was president. I'd call and I'd say, you can't do that to the head of a country. And they wouldn't do it, and Russia would have never done it. And Hamas would never have done it because Iran wouldn't have given him the money or had the money to do it. No. Trump, you going there, bro? You going there, bro? This is, bro. I mess with Trump heavy, bro. I, I kid you not. I mess with Trump heavy. Since I got older and I start to see things for what it is, I mess with Trump heavy, bro. The biggest goal that I have for next year is stop listening to news feeds, okay? Especially when they are Democratic news feed or they lean more towards the left on things and all they do is lean towards the left they don't you know say they don't see things for what it is they're not looking at it from a godly perspective or they they take people like trump and they just banish his name you know what i'm saying and say that he did this and he did this and he and they're not even open-minded see stop listening to news news articles like that bro stop listening to news feeds like he said they're fake news okay i'm done paulson bro i'm sorry bro trump got me fired up man oh it's very terrible what's going on Hard to believe, actually. Joe Biden and the Democrat Party are incapable of solving any problems. Crooked Joe Biden is a low IQ individual. He is truly the worst, most incompetent, and most corrupt president in the history of our country. Other than that, I think quite a bit of him. Can, can you believe what's going on in our country? Can you believe what's going on with the border? You watch 
And, the, you know, the fake news doesn't want to show it too much, uh, certain of them. And uh, I will tell you what's going on in our border. They're coming in by the millions, and we have no idea who they are, They're coming from all over the world. But with your vote in this election, together we're going to save America, and we're going to bring our country back from hell. Our country has been in hell. Mm. Not one thing has gotten better under crooked Joe Biden. Under the Trump administration, you were better off, your family was better off, your neighbors were better off, and our country was better off. And you're also much safer when you had me behind the desk of the Oval Office. You were better off five years ago. Think of it. Just ask yourself, were you better off five years ago? Or were you better off today with the inflation, with bacon that costs you four times higher than you would have had to pay a little while ago? It's gone up. Nobody's ever said anything like it. But what a difference a president makes. A president makes a big difference. Since Joe Biden took over, we've had a three-year inflation rate of over 20 percent. Under my leadership, inflation was non-existent, and we had gasoline at $1.87 a gallon. And they was trying to get you out of office? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, what? How could, bro, how could you even seriously try to get this man out of office when gas was freaking, oh, all right, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm sorry. After three years of Bidenomics, the average monthly mortgage has gone from $1,700 under my administration to $3,400 under this terrible administration. As long as Joe Biden is in the White House, the American dream is dead. It's dead. There is no American dream. But all of that will change the minute the polls close on election night 2024. It's going to all change. The next economic boom will begin the instant the world knows that crooked Joe Biden is gone and Donald J. Trump and us, all of us together, have won four more years as president of the United States. It's a very important thing because our country is really it's a disaster. It's not even believable what's happened to our country in a period of three years. Powered by the momentum of our historic victory by Christmas of next year, and it's a couple of months later, by Christmas of next year, the economy will be roaring back, energy prices will be plummeting, the hordes of people charging across our border will have totally ended, the invasion will have stopped. And I heard somebody today say, uh, one of these uh, genius analysts, the stock market's good, the rich get richer, but the stock market's good because they think Trump is going to win the election. And I believe that's true. And whatever good they have right now is the fumes of what we left them. It's coming off the fumes of what we've left them. But the stock market is good because a lot of people think we're going to win the election. So that's an interesting uh, an interesting fact. I felt that, but I didn't want to say it. But I think we will say it. Because just like three years ago, they will know that I will catch. And when you have people that are pouring across the border at levels like uh, no country has ever seen, not us, no country has ever seen, third world nations have never seen, they'd stop them with sticks and stones, I say. But they'll know that I'll catch them and we'll send them home and the entire world will be safer and more peaceful because everyone will know that the days of Biden surrenders are over. So many mistakes. There's been nothing good that's happened. Nothing good. What good has happened in the last three years? Our country's gone to hell. As soon as I get back in the Oval Office, I'll also immediately end the war on Christians. I don't know if you feel it. If you have a war. There's a war. Under crooked Joe Biden, Christians and Americans of faith are being persecuted and government has been weaponized against religion like never before and also presidents like never before. <laughs> Here I am. I always say Al Capone was treated better than I was treated. Scarface, Al Capone, he was a tough one. Biden and his corrupt Department of Injustice have sent SWAT teams to arrest pro-life activists They've targeted conservative parents at school board meetings who don't want filth taught to their children. It's mm. filth. What they're teaching in schools is filth it is. It and nonsense. Is. And we can't let that happen. 
but they're being targeted. And now the communists, Marxists, and fascists are going hard after Catholics, even plotting to send spies into Catholic churches. It's all come out, just like in the Soviet Union from days gone by. Now, think of it. If you're Catholic, why would you vote for a Democrat? What they're doing to Catholics. I don't know what's going on with the Catholics, but they're really being persecuted. Why would you vote for Biden, and why would you vote for a Democrat? A new report from the House Judiciary Committee proves that the Biden FBI actually targeted Catholics as potential domestic terrorists. Do you believe this? And, you know, uh, evangelicals will not be far behind, because when that starts, it starts happening on a very major scale. When I'm back in the White House, never again will your government be used to target Christians and other religious believers. Upon taking office, I will create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias to be led by a fully reformed Department of Justice that's fair and equitable. Its mission will be. This is what I mean by when I get like when I'm voting, I'm I'm. this is what I'm looking for. OK, I, I don't care what people have to say about Jesus Christ and anything like that. At the end of the day, Jesus Christ is everyone's Lord and Savior. Or if he's not, he should be. You know what I'm saying? And I love the fact that Trump, the president of the United States, have these Christian values, these Christian morals that he want to come back and place back into America and bring America back to what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of president that we need. But a lot of people, they don't want that. What they want is somebody who's going to raise up gas prices, who's going to raise up groceries and all these different things. And it's going to be hard to live. And we got about we got to get two jobs just to afford some bacon. Yes, I am very stressed. I'm just saying to investigate all forms of illegal discrimination, harassment and persecution against Christians in America. They are going after Christians in America. Who's who's can believe all this stuff? It's not believable, is it? But it is fact. It's just like so many of the other things when I stand up and I say that we will stop and I've said it. We will stop men from participating in women's sports. I mean, the whole thing. <laughs> That you have no, but things that you you say that you say that you can't believe you're up here and uh, and saying it. We 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 are for parental rights. You have to say that. No, no, think of it. We are for parental rights. Who believes that? Ten years ago, fifteen years ago, who would ever have to say a thing like that? We're for parental rights. Of course, we're for parental rights. But the Democrats aren't. They're fascists. They're not. They want school boards. They want people to. Take your children and do things with your children that are not even speakable. Americans of faith are not a threat to our country. Americans of faith are the soul of our country, and they have been from the beginning. I will defend religion, and I will defend in God we trust. We, we will defend in God we trust, which is... This is why I love Trump, bro. And you know that very important phrase is under siege. You do know that, right? We will defend it 100%. When Joe Biden lit the national Christmas tree earlier this month, he completely failed to even mention the birth of Jesus Christ, which is hard to do if you're celebrating Christmas, right? He didn't mention Jesus Christ in his remarks. Not for three years he hasn't mentioned that and barely mentioned God. When I was president, we brought back the beautiful phrase, Merry Christmas. And I said I'd do that. I'm very proud of that, actually, because as I said at the beginning, it was really under siege. And when I lit the Christmas tree each year, it was my honor to publicly celebrate the true source of uh, Christmas joy, which is Jesus Christ. As president, I kept every promise I made to Christians and more, and I think everybody in this room understands that very well. That's pretty well documented. In our first four years, we appointed nearly 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I stood up for religious liberty at home and all around the world. I protected innocent life, and I defended the Judeo-Christian values of our nation's founding. I proudly recognize Israel's eternal capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem, which is a big thing. Wow. Wow. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And, you know, they were looking to get that for 72 years. 
They'd fly in, they'd fly out, they'd fly in, they'd fly, every year they'd fly in, they'd discuss it, they'd fly out. And I got it done in about 12 minutes. We got it done very quickly. And with the historic Abraham Accords, I even made peace in the Middle East. Unfortunately, they haven't taken it any further. It should have been taken. We could have had everybody signed up. It's no wonder crooked Joe Biden and the far left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They are willing to violate the U.S. constitutions at levels never seen before in order to win this election. Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. It's a threat. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference because we're beating them so badly in the polls. The new CBS poll, remember, I always used to talk about polls, but only if they were good. I don't mention them if they were bad. I had a tendency if they were bad, I didn't talk about them, right? I don't know. That's probably sort of like a little bit like the fake news would do, so I feel very embarrassed by it. But the new CBS poll just out has us at 58% of the state with the sanctimonious 40 points behind us, 40 points. The new morning console poll, that's in your state. The console poll has us at 66% nationwide, with the sanctus at 11% and Haley at 11%. And then they said, Haley is surging because she went from 9 to 11. I went up seven points. She went up two points. And it's harder to go up seven when you're almost at the top. There's not that many points left. So I went up seven, she went up two, and the headline was, Haley is surging because she caught the sanctimonious. The Fox poll has us trouncing the primary field at 69%, with the sanctus at 13%, and Haley at nine. And you know, it's sort of interesting, he did an interview the other day, and the uh, announcer, this was sort of a straight interview at a major network. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to have Governor Ron DeSantis with us. No, no, it's DeSantis. It's a, so that's good branding. Do you agree? That's good. Nah, but he is sanctimonious. In the new Rasmussen poll of the general election, we're dominating by 10, 11, 12, even 14 points. And the Washington Post had it up 11. And then they said, oh, there must be, this must be an outlier. They spend a million and a half dollars on a poll, the Washington Post, and they panic. They say, this must be an outlier. This is the first time anyone ever had a poll, and they said, we think our poll must be wrong. But we have even better numbers than that. No, they're going crazy. But none of this matters if you don't show up to support us on January 15th and again on November 5th. So it's, again, the same thing. you got to show up. Even if you think we're going to win by a lot, you got to show up. Because winning by a lot, lot is uh, very meaningful. Even as countries watch from afar, because we would never have any of these problems if I were president. But when they see the kind of support that we have, we have incredible support. We have more support than we did in 2020 or 2016, and we did great. We won 2016, and then we did, then we did even better by a lot, by millions and millions of votes in 2020. It was a rigged election. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it. Every time it's, the it's crazy because a lot of people will say, oh, it wasn't rigged. You lost. Like, bro, no, 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 no. That junk was rigged. Okay, bro, I wasn't even into the whole politics and president and trying to see all the votes and this and that. But from what I do know, bro, trust, trust and believe that junk was rigged, bro. That junk was rigged. I kid you not. When Trump, when Trump, damn man, Trump won in 2016. That's crazy, bro. It doesn't, it doesn't even seem like it was that long ago, bro. But man, that was long. It don't even seem like 2016 was super long ago. But it's like, damn, bro, like that junk crazy. Like I remember those days, man. I remember those days. So he say, I remember those days. Anyways, that's that's the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is that. It's crazy how when Trump is trying to get into get into office, every all eyes are against him. I kid you not, all eyes. The fact that he got removed from the ballot, that's that's an eye right there. You know what I'm saying? The fact that like how like how could you possibly even get removed? I'm just I don't know if that ever happened in history of presidents, but bro, that is crazy. That is crazy to get removed is wild. You know what I'm saying? The then the votes, the, come on now, that was very rigged. So it's like every time this man wants to get into office, all all odds, 
just pulling against them, pulling against them, pulling against them. But then people don't look at, people don't do the research for themselves to see exactly what Trump done did for America as a whole. Forget what he did for black people, because I know a lot of black people, man, he gave money to the HBCU. Okay, that's nice and all, but forget all that. Let's talk about what he did as for America as a whole. You know what I'm saying? As a literally as a nation. Okay, like he did so much for this nation, bro, and for us to just want to kick him to the curve because he said this one little bit of thing, or he, they think that he's racist, or they think that he's this, and they think that he's that. People need to do their own research, watch stuff like this to truly get a understanding of who trump really is you know what i'm saying like you gotta understand who trump truly is you gotta understand his sense of humor you gotta understand his character and everything that he stands for you gotta understand all this stuff to understand who trump really is bro it's like getting to know a person you just don't get to know a person based off one clip like no you gotta get to know them like you gotta understand everything about them and be like oh this is why they said what they said is there is part of their sense of humor oh this is what they meant when they said this Trump 2024, that's all I got to say, bro. The radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me. I consider it actually a great badge of honor. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Because I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. I'm not going to let them do it. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way, and I always will stand in their way. And, you know, I've been saying this a lot lately because I see the kind of crowds. We go up to these uh, large areas. We come out to the rural areas. No matter where we go, we have packed houses, packed houses, some of them. We filled up an arena last time, a massive arena. We had thousands of people outside, couldn't get in. Brad was there, they couldn't get in. This is, he got in. We almost said, keep him out, let's keep him out, right? No, he's, he's always gonna be invited. This is far more than a campaign. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. That's what it is. This is a great political movement. We will once again fight for Iowa families and Iowa farmers, just as we did four straight years. We fought for you. We've done more for the state of Iowa than any president ever in history. There's never been a, because when you add it all up, what we've done, unlike Crooked Joe, who wants to dramatically increase the estate tax or the death tax, as they call it. I virtually eliminated the unfair death tax, saving countless farms from and families and families of farmers. They love their children. They leave their farmer, their farm to the children. And the tax was so incredible that the children often have to file bankruptcy because they had to go borrow money to pay the estate tax or the death tax. And I eliminated that tax. I eliminated. So now you can leave. If you love your children, if you don't love your children, then I haven't done that much for you. But some people love their children. Does everybody in this room love their children? I do. Does anybody in this room not love their children? Raise your hand. Oh, that guy in the blue jacket raises hand. But no, it's very important because uh, people were going to the heirs. You know, you inherit a farm, you have a 40, 50 percent tax to pay, and they fight with you over the tax, and they end up going to the bankers. The banks are, just have been so bad, not the local bank. There's some of these big banks have been horrible, horrible people running them. But, you know, uh, the banks, they loan the money, and they end up taking over the farm. We're not doing that. So we ended the estate tax. and. Uh, farms and small businesses now they don't have to go into hock and end up losing everything and the parents are very happy about that they're looking down and they're saying i'm so happy i love president trump because that was a big that was a big thing i ended the nafta disaster the worst trade deal ever made and replaced it with the usmca the best trade deal ever made and that was a giant win for iowa farmers I took on the communist Chinese like no administration in history. Communist China was doing a number on the farmers, and you know it better than anybody, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten 10 cents from China. Nobody had ever brought in any money. I brought in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. In fact, China is not now 
doing very well, and a lot of people think it was because of what I did with respect to all of the hundreds of billions I brought in. And Biden is unable to cancel it because it's so much money that it's having a hard time canceling. It's hard to say, oh, gee, let's not do that for hundreds of billions of dollars. And then I gave the farmers $28 billion straight out of the tariffs I took in from China, a large part of which came right back to the state of Iowa, right? That's why my people in the back, you know, my great genius is, sir, please don't say that too often because you sound very conceited when you say that you guarantee that Iowa is going to vote for you. You guarantee Iowa. I said, I got him $28 billion, of course. Who else is going to get him $28 billion? I said, go out and buy more land and larger tractors. Do you remember that? But you know what? They stuck with me because we had a period of six or seven months with China. You know, the great negotiators, they were playing hardball. But we ended up winning, and they by now, we made a trade deal with China. I don't even talk about it because of COVID. But we made one of the greatest trade deals ever made. They buy $50 billion worth of product from this country, and they were buying nothing before that. They were buying nothing. So it was an amazing thing that happened, and uh, it's an honor to have done it. And I do believe I could say that, but I won't say it because I will not say that because my people have said so. I will not guarantee it, but I pretty much guarantee it, okay? <laughs> let's vote against, let's vote against Trump because he gave us $28 billion. I don't know. It's somehow they got a problem with that one, don't they? Huh? The people that are running against us and who, frankly, were not in favor of farmers. You know, Ron DeSanctimonious was not a friend of the farmer. He fought against the farm bill. He fought against ethanol hard, very hard. Now all of a sudden he loves ethanol. About two weeks ago it started, right? No one gets abused on trade worse than American agriculture, yet no other president lifted a finger for you. Nobody lifted a finger for you in Iowa. Nobody. Under my leadership, we will have a great rebirth of loyalty to the American farmer and loyalty to the American flag. Bro, that's a big one because of how much they're changing the flags around. And I, I do want to say this, too. I'm not going to watch this whole video, y'all, because this is an hour-long video. And, like, it is 11.22 right now. And, like, I don't want this video to be as long as it needs to be. Or, you know, be as... You, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't want this video to be too long. So, you know, I might watch a couple more minutes. I'm trying to get to the part where he actually talks out on, you know what I'm saying, on him being removed. Uh if he gets if he ever gets to it but if not then i will do a part two i watch a little parts and parts of it to see if i can figure out or find exactly what clip he talked about getting removed or when he spoke out but however he is not lying when 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 he say um dang what did he just say oh my gosh i just lost my train of thought oh my lord Oh, okay. Let's go back because I just lost my train of thought. I had something to say, but I don't know what I was going to say. Rebirth of loyalty to the American farmer and loyalty to the American flag. Ding! There we go. That's what they're doing so much now is that they're changing the flag. They're disrespecting the American flag. Since Biden been in office, there has not been so... Bro, I ain't never seen this many people disrespect the American flag. Okay? Like, seriously. I mean, bro, regardless of how you may feel about America... The, it's a lot behind the American flag, okay? Like, I mean, the 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 thing that I think about the most is these people that literally risk their freaking lives for us, for our ungrateful behinds, people that have families who went out there, risked their life. Did, did we ask for them to risk their life? No, we did not. But however, they did it because they really loved America. <laughs> And I'm going to pass something that's so important. We were just about set to do that. We had the greatest economy in history. We we're just about set. And then we hit COVID. COVID came, a gift from China, from Wuhan. I told them it came from the Wuhan lab. I said it right from the beginning. I never changed Trump. You ever see the hats? Trump was right about everything. Some of the things I don't want to be right about, like I think our country's in more danger now for World War III than ever before. I don't want to be right about that. But uh, we have a man who's grossly incompetent, and he's talking about nuclear weapons and uh, negotiations. He doesn't even know what the hell he's talking. He can't even he can't even find the stairs to get off a stage. <laughs> right? There they are. There they are. They're all over the place. Jump off the front, but don't walk into the back wall. 
You ever see that? He finishes a speech, if you call it that. He did a news conference the other day, and he goes, uh, okay, let's see. You know, I did news conferences in the White House. You, 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 you. He did a news Jim Jones of NBC? Oh, is he here? Oh. The guy says, Mr. President, uh, what about this? What about that? What about that? I would like to tell you the following. He's reading the answer, meaning, <laughs> meaning he knows the questions and they write down the answer. He reads the answer. If I ever did that, they would impeach me a third time. <laughs> right? They would impeach me a third time. We beat him twice. <laughs> All right, man. I will stop the video right there uh, because this video is going to be very long. And like I said, I don't want I don't want this video to be longer than what it has to be. But I'm gonna get my thoughts uh, on the situation about him being removed from the ballot. Like, I don't know. Like like I said, I I have to look through this entire video to find the clip because normally I don't watch videos before I react to them. I want to give a genuine reaction, so I don't watch all the videos that I you know react to. Some I may I may you know watch them to get a better understanding, but others I mostly just give y'all genuine reactions. That's what I want to give y'all. But however, with this whole situation of him being removed and everything like that, tr truth be told. I just I feel as if they're trying to get rid of Trump because they need they know that Trump is going to win in 2024. The Democrats they know this. They 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 know this. People who 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 lean more to the left side, they they know all of this. You know what I'm saying? Because Biden already showed his true colors. People who was on Biden's side is now going to be on Trump's side. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be on Trump's side now because guess what? Trump had they, they realized how better it was with Trump than what it is with now with Biden. Like Trump said, in the last three years, what what has happened that is good, that is beneficial for America since Biden been in office? I will wait. What can you tell me that has happened now that is good since Biden been in office? Since Biden been in office, I can't name not one thing that was beneficial for my life. I, I can't know what you want a stimulus check. People was getting their PPP loans. Bro, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing compared to all the things that when Trump was in office that he did. All the things to help America be great again. See, Trump didn't care about the money. He wasn't here for the money. He was here to not to number one, make America great again. That's his slogan. Make America just how it used to be. Two, he was bringing Christian values, Christian morals back onto this country. Because if you didn't know, this country did, it, it did start off as a Christian country, okay? If I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think I'm mistaken on that. I think it was, or yeah, it was a Christian country. Now, I don't know what type of country this is, but however, this country is just all into shambles. But however, this was a Christian country, you know what I'm saying? So he's bringing about these Christian morals, these Christian values, and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Then number three, the, the best thing that Trump was trying to do was trying to make an easier life for all the true Americans. For all people who was raised and born in America, he was trying to make an easy, easier life for them. Easier life. Not going to say it was going to be 100% easy all the way through, but it was going to be way easier than what it was way easier than how it is now. Nowadays, you got to have two jobs just to afford gas. You got to have two jobs just to get groceries. You got to have two incomes in the household just to afford the rent. You know what I'm saying? When Trump was in office, you didn't have to have two jobs to do this and two jobs to do that. You could live off the income that you was getting depending on what job you had. Just saying. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. Don't try to get rid of Trump. It ain't going to work. I'm going to just let you know that now. You trying to get rid of Trump is it, it's impossible. It is truly impossible because Trump is going to win 2024. You know he's going to win 2024. They're going to try to mess with the votes. They're going to try to do all everything they can so this man won't win in 2024 they, they're going to try to do everything they can because the, the the devil he is working he is working the devil is working trust and believe me but uh without further ado man i hope you guys enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe to our post notifications being your boy the pen i love each and every one of y'all god bless stay blessed peace